Hi there. Aaron Slopey Sloper coming at you. Um, today is a very special day and a very special episode of the podcast. Um, I'm actually doing a visual re- representation um, of the podcast today uh, just because it is so special. Um, today, I have been tasked as the air boss or ground control, as we like to call it, uh, because air boss is technically a, a uh, title that is given to a particular person through the governing body of air shows, otherwise known as ICAS. And you can actually see that on episode three with Kelly Hudson. She is the most badass air boss that I know. Anywho, uh, I am ground control for a flyover at a funeral uh, by special request of a very close friend of the family's uh, that is being interred into the Houston National Cemetery down in uh, the north side of Houston. Uh, Today we have, I think, not entirely sure just yet, uh, I think for sure two ship, possibly three, that we're going to be controlling. Um, they're doing a missing man formation, uh, which if you're not familiar with, uh, it's going to be, uh, and I've already talked to the, the ground lead at the West Houston airport with the Houston wing of the commemorative air force. Um, they are going to be lining up in a right echelon, uh, which basically it's plain, plain, plain. Um, it's not a V formation. It's a straight line diagonal. And they will be flying over with smoke and the center, uh, usually the center plane pulls up and to the right or up and to the left away from the formation. Uh, Traditionally, the missing man formation was a way of the Air Force pilots signifying that the there was a loss of life during the wartime, not specifically World War One and World War Two, um, back before they had radios in the airplanes uh, to talk to ground control. Um, the way they would take off is they would fire a flare at a specific time, uh, and then when they came back uh, to signify everybody on the ground that there was loss of life, they would do a missing man formation. Um, it has been traditionally handed down to uh, civilian uh, and uh, veteran uh, funerals, basically. Uh, You can see it uh, performed everywhere um, from funerals to uh, air shows, uh, specifically. Usually, there's a missing man uh, right around the halfway point of the air shows, uh, the big air shows, Wings Over Houston, um, Oshkosh, and whatnot, uh, usually right at the end of the Legacy, or uh, the Heritage Flight. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty big honor right now. I'm on my way from Conroe down to Houston. Um, it's about a 45 minute drive. Um, no traffic on the way. It is a beautiful day to fly. It is currently 68 degrees on my dash and that's not a, that's not an official, uh, temperature, but it is 68 degrees. The wind is hardly there and there is not a cloud in the sky. So it is going to be a very good day to fly. Um, I'll come back at you when I get to the cemetery. Hang tight. From the Right Seat Podcast. It's a different episode, I know. But you'll enjoy it, I think. Hang tight. All right, so here I am at the Houston National Cemetery. Uh, we are on the east side of the very 
uh, Center Memorial. Uh, it's a beautiful cemetery here. As you can see, it is an absolute gorgeous day. I am facing right now westbound uh, from where the airplanes are going to be coming in from. They're going to be flying due east towards the cemetery. And like I said earlier, I'm ground control, so I'm going to be doing the 3 2 1 pull. And I just confirmed actually with our, our flight lead that we are actually flying three ship. It was, this was a complete last minute thing that we actually got put together rather quickly. Thanks to Sam Bolger from the Houston wing and the Gulf Coast wing and the West Texas wing. Uh, man of many hats. Um, and thank you for entrusting me uh, to do this performance today with the Houston National Cemetery for this funeral. So as time goes on. Uh, I will be filming uh, different things. I have to coordinate with the family and the funeral director right now to see exactly when they're going to want the poll. A lot of coordination that has to go in with it. I just talked to the flight lead as well on the phone, and he's already coordinated with uh, Houston Approach because we will be flying in the Bravo, uh, on the inner shelf of the Bravo, of uh, uh, Houston, uh, the Bush Intercontinental Airport. So that's all been coordinated with Approach. They're going to be talking to Tower. I'm going to be talking to them, uh, and we'll have a good flyover. Real quick, way I have a second. This is my setup. I have uh, our briefing and also flight radar. Uh, there you can see the honor flight circling just a few miles outside of our area, and then my GoPro over there running uh, just a cheap Yaesu radio on a David Clark headset with in-flight cam uh, setup for audio. It is a marine ceremony. One bugle player and one, I'm sorry, two honor guard with the family's pallbearers of the deceased. We are going to set the casket, do the flight holding ceremony, and then we'll be calling them in on the radio. We're currently holding at the holding point about three miles in the way. Take them about two minutes to get here once I call them in. It looks like on the radar, it's been about six or seven laps so far. So, this is what we do. So, stay tuned. So they just play taps. Beautiful rendition. Single bugle. Stand by on our flight. Ground control on our flight. On our flight, go ahead. Start making your run in. A little technical difficulty there. They're making the run in now. Honor flight ground control lights on.
And after this, they bring it back up and they head home. And that's it. See you guys. So, that's that. Um, this is actually my first solo performance uh, for Honor Flight for our flyover program. Um, went pretty well. I had a little hiccup there at the uh, towards the end with the headset. They apparently couldn't hear me on the other side, so I just had to unplug my headset and use the radio, straight radio. And uh, you know, with with it being a low powered radio, um, being cheap. You know, it's it doesn't it doesn't have the range that a regular aircraft would have, and aircraft radios are designed to work in the air, you know, beaming down uh, to the to the ground and whatnot. And I'm on the ground with a low power radio, so it was just, you know, it was just a, I guess, bad timing for the, for the stuff to to not work. But in the end, it all worked out. The family liked it. The funeral director liked it. The Houston National Cemetery guys loved it. Uh, they said that a lot of people were were looking up when when we flew over. So uh, big thanks to the commemorative Air Force Houston Wing, uh, the Flying Tigers, and Sam Bolger, especially, and also the Gulf Coast Wing, uh, who I'm a proud member of. And uh, without uh, Without any of the uh, any of the following or the previous people, none of this would have uh, would have come down into this performance. So I'm glad to be a part of this organization, and I'm glad to be able to do the things that we do, especially for our veterans. It is what we're there to do: uh, honor, inspire, and educate. Is what the mission statement of the Commemorative Air Force actually is. So it's been a been a wild ride so far so glad to be part of it if there's any questions you may have uh, leave them in the comments below uh, please like share and subscribe to the channel uh, I'm on YouTube we're on Facebook we're on Instagram and then the podcast is anywhere you get podcasts mainly Spotify uh, and uh, Apple podcasts as well podcast actually does get uploaded through YouTube so if you are a YouTube person, uh, more than happy to, to keep uploading the YouTube as well. So that's it for this episode of From the Right Seat, my first visual element of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Fly safe. Blue skies, my friends. See ya. Thanks for joining us on this episode of From the Right Seat. Don't forget to like and subscribe on Instagram and Facebook, and be sure to check us out, maybe even share with your friends, anywhere you get podcasts. This is Slopey, signing off. Blue skies and tailwinds, friends.